get ready and uh, let's kind of firm this up a little bit. Falls in off. If you have your Bibles, get ready to turn with me to the book of Galatians. Book of Galatians, chapter 3. Yes, excuse me. Thank you. And I'm going to start reading here at verse 5. Galatians 3 and verse 5. You can turn it down a little bit. He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, do he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Paul is saying miracles come. When they come, do they, are they going to come by the works of the law? On by the hearing of faith. He makes it plain, don't he? And verse 6 says, even as, even as Abraham believed God, and it was counted him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture for sin, God would justify the heathens through what? Through faith. God equips us. He clears us. He um, takes away all of our sins and all of our past failures through our coming to him in faith. Through faith, preach before the. Listen to this. I'm going to read that again. And the scripture for sin, God would justify the heathens through faith. Preach before the gospel under Abraham. No wonder Abraham is the father of faith. I wonder where he got it from. He got it from hearing the gospel. No matter what you mean, got it from the Jesus wasn't born yet. He said, Before Abraham was, I am. Didn't he? Abraham had to hear some faith coming by hearing, hearing by the word. In the beginning was the word. Preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. See, that's the gospel. In you, all nations are going to be blessed. So then they which are of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. In you, all nations are going to be blessed. That's the gospel. Out of you, out of your seed is going to come Emmanuel. And through him, his, his blood is going to be shed. And he's going to offer his body as a sacrifice. And through you, he's going to come out of your lineage, out of your seed. It's going under us a child is born. A son is given. His name shall be called Emmanuel, which being interpreted God. That's the gospel. Abraham, out of you is going to come the son of God. And the son of God is going to be the word made flesh dwelling among us. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. And as many as are of the works of the law are under the law, are under the curse. I'm glad I'm not under some law. People accuse us of being legalism and under the law because we believe in dress modesty and because we believe in pra practicing holiness. We know that holiness, you know, um, is the nature that comes from the Holy Ghost into us and transforming us into his likeness. We understand that. But we know that our works don't save us. We're not saved by works lest any man should boast. 
but it's through the grace of God through faith. By faith, through grace, we're saved. And as many as are of the works of the law, see, are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all the things which are written in the book of the law to do them, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. We're not justified by, you know, how good we are and all the, the trying to keep the law. That's, that don't justify us. If the law could have saved us, he would not have had to send his son. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are keeping the law. No, no. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Huh? For they that are after the flesh, mind the things of the flesh. But I'm not going that way. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Christ has delivered us from sin, sickness, demon powers, everything that's under the curse of the law. Christ has redeemed us from what Adam brought upon us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree, that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. He that received the miracles, how did he receive it? By the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. The Holy Ghost comes through faith. Miracles comes through faith. Healing comes through faith. Salvation comes through faith. Forgiveness of our sins comes through faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Huh? But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Now, I want to um, you to turn with me. Verse 15 is where I was. Did I stop at verse 15? Stop at 14. Brethren, I speak after the manner of man, though it be, though it be though it be a man's covenant yet it is yet if it be confirmed no man disannul it or erases or blot out or add thereto in other words this this salvation this miracle power this deliverance it didn't come from um, keeping the law Moses could have brought in perfection if it had him but it didn't come that way it came through Jesus Christ through his blood now let's go on to the main let's go to Romans chapter 4 and verse 13 let's read that one Romans 4 and verse 13 one of y'all read that one For the promise that he should be the heir of the world. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world. Was not to Abraham. Was not to Abraham. Or to his seed. Uh-huh. Through the law. Uh-huh. See, it didn't come through this, our Savior, our salvation, our deliverance. Didn't come to Abraham through the law. Abraham was before the law. Go ahead. 
was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, uh -huh. but through the righteousness of faith. Through the righteousness of faith. For if they which are of the law yes. be heirs, faith is made void, uh -huh. and the promise made of none effect. Because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. Uh -huh. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be by grace. It is a faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure that, to all the seed. Yes. Not to that only which is of the law, uh -huh. but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham. Not just to the Jews, but to the faith, those that are of the faith of Abraham, the Gentiles. Uh huh. Who is the father of us all. Miracles is for all. Healing is for all. Deliverance is for all. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is for all. What God done, it wasn't just for the Jews. He said, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Sons and daughters, servants, handmaids, young men and old. All can come to him to get healed. All can come to him to get deliverance. All can come to him to get power over the devil. Not just one nationality, I mean, not just one group of people, but all. God loved the whole, God so loved the what? All, the whole world. And if the Russians come to him, he'll save them. If those Chinese come to him, he'll save them. If those Koreans come to him, he'll save them. He'll save Africa. He'll save India. He'll save Americans. He'll save all that have come to him through faith in Jesus. Not just faith in anybody, but your faith has to be based in the word, in Jesus Christ. Let's read here. Thank you. Let's read here in uh, Genesis 12. Thank you for your Genesis chapter 12 and verse 3. Y'all got that one? Did we, uh, no, wait a minute, uh, Romans 3, Romans 4 and 13, that's what we was at. 4 and 13 through verse 17, let's read that, Romans 4, 13 through 17. What verse were you at? We stopped at uh, verse 17. Oh, oh, we've read that 13 through 17? Okay, let's go back Go back to verse 13. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world. Was not to Abraham. Was not to Abraham. Or to his seed. Or to his seed. Through the law. Through the law. But through the righteousness of faith. But through the righteousness of faith. For if they which are of the law be heirs. Uh-huh. Faith is made void. Yes. And the promise made of none effect. Uh-huh. Because the law worked in wrath. Yes. For where no law is, there is no transgression. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed. Not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham. We are of the faith of Abraham. Uh huh. Who is the father of us all. He's the father not just of the Jews, but the father of us all. And the faith that he speaks about, I just read that scripture that Abraham, you know, heard the gospel and believed it. He heard that he, out of his lineage, out of his seed, was going to come the savior of the whole world. Before there was a law, before Moses was ever born. Go ahead. Verse 17. As it is written. As it is written. I have made thee a father of many nations. I have made you a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed. Uh-huh. Even God. Yes. Who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Abraham believed that word when God said, get up and leave your family 
and I'm going to take you into a, 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 a different country, a different place. And I'm going to bless you. And I'm going to bless your seed. Abraham did not have any children. He, he and Sarah, and he took his nephew, Lot, and servants and handmaids, and they left. Didn't they? But he believed what God said. Okay, let's read that. Finish reading that again. Read on. Uh, at verse 17. Read on. Who against hope believed in hope. Didn't have no cheering. He being a hundred years old. You know, no cheering about Sarah. I mean, Hagar, Sarah got impatient and caused her Egyptian maid to lay with Abraham. And that's how the uh, Arabs, and that's how a lot of the uh, uh, Arabians, you know, a lot of those people that are over there, they came in uh, through, the, uh, uh, through an Egyptian and through Abraham came the uh, Muslim. That, that's how that Muslim stuff come from. But anyway, if Sarah had just been patient, we would never would have had to deal with, you know, these people that believe in cutting your heads off. <laughs> okay, finish reading that. Who against hope believed in hope. Who against hope believed in hope. Even though there was no uh, physical hope because of their age and because, but yet he against that believed in hope. Uh huh. That he might become the father of many nations. Yes. According to that which was spoken. I'm I'm a hundred years. My wife is ninety years. She's barren, but I'm having hope against hope that's what real faith is when you got hope against what you can see what you can what you can smell what you can taste you got hope against the natural there is a hope that goes that there is a hope that's not seen and that hope is what faith uh comes out of that hope let's read on Read on. Hope, believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. Who again so believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken. According to what was spoken. According to that word. That's where his faith came from. That's where his faith originated. According to that which was spoken. Uh huh. So shall thy seed be. So shall your seed be. And being not weak in faith. I ain't got no seed. But Abraham being not weak in faith. Uh huh. He considered not his own body now dead. Considered not his own body. You know, when you're walking by faith, you can't look at your body. You can't look at how weak you are. You can't look at the circumstances. You can't look at what's going on with you by with your physical body. Huh? Read on. Being not weak in faith. Being not weak in faith. He considered not his own body. Didn't look at the situation. Didn't look at the circumstances. Didn't look at the impossibilities. Uh-huh. Now, Dave, when he was about a hundred years old. hundred years old. Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Yes. He staggered not at the promise of God. He didn't stagger. You know, uh, if uh, James said, if you come to God, you can't waver. You can't be up and down. If you come to God, then he said, you, never, you get nothing if you waver. You've got to hold fast to what the word says. Hold fast to the promises. Hold fast to what God has given us already through the gospel. He's already made us healed and delivered us through the gospel. Finish reading that. He staggered not at the promise of God. People stagger at the promise of God when they get their eyes off the word and get their eyes on what man is saying. Get their eyes on what the body is saying. Get their eyes on other things. Uh huh. Through unbelief. Through unbelief. But was strong in faith. He was strong in faith. Giving glory to God. Giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded. Being, see that is being fully persuaded. 
That what he had promised. That what he had promised. He was able also to perform. He was able to perform. See, Isaiah. Uh, before I get to that one, let's read uh, Hebrews 10 and 35. Well, let's read Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 13. Hebrews 3 and verse 14, excuse me. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 14. For we are made partakers. We're made partakers of Christ. Of Christ. If we hold. We're made partakers of him, his health, his divine life, his miracles, his deliverance, his power. If what? We hold. If we hold the beginning of our confidence, the beginning of our confidence steadfast, steadfast unto the end. Unto the end. Y'all believe that? Read verse 6, Hebrews 3 and verse 6. But Christ as a son. But Christ as a son. Over his own house. Uh-huh. Whose house are we. Yes. If we hold fast. If we hold fast. The confidence. The confidence. And the rejoicing. And the rejoicing. Of the hope firm unto the end. Of that hope that we have firm, hold firm to it unto the end. Anybody hoping for something? Anybody believing for something? Read Hebrews chapter 10, 35 through 37. Cast not away, therefore. Cast not away, therefore. Your confidence. Don't cast your confidence away. Which had great recompense. Which had great recompense. Of reward. Of reward. For you have need of patience. Uh-huh. That after you have done the will of God, yes. you might receive the promise. You know, God is not a man that he should lie. Therefore, you need to hold fast to your confidence. Over in Genesis chapter 22, verse 1 through verse 14, you know, God spoke. And Abraham he didn't get discouraged. He didn't cast away his confidence. He believed what God told him that out of his lineage, lineage was going to come for uh, a seed and out of that seed was going to come salvation. He did not waver at what God said. 100 years old, but he still ain't wavering. Sarah, 99 years old, but Abraham looking at her, and he still ain't wavering. He didn't cast away his confidence. And now, look what's happened. Now Isaac has been born through a miracle. Now that Isaac has been born through a miracle, here, 14 years later, maybe, God is testing Abraham again. Abraham, take your son Isaac, cut his head off, make a fire, and make a, and burn him. To, to ashes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Abraham didn't cast his confidence away because God told him to kill his son and to burn him up and to offer his ashes to him. He didn't cast it. Well, God was able to raise him up out of the ashes. Finish reading that. Romans. What was. No, yeah, I know that. But back where you was at. I'm in Genesis, but you stay in Romans chapter 4. And, and I think it was at verse 17. As it is written. As it is written. I have made thee a father of many nations. Uh-huh. Before him whom he believed. Yes. Even God. Even God. Who quickened it to dead. Who quick, see that? Even God who quickened it to dead. And Abraham said, God is telling me to take my son now that I have received him through a uh, a miracle. I have received him in my age of being a hundred and my wife being nanny and now here it is 14 years later God is telling me to take him and burn him up and offer his ashes offer his body and now I'm not going to cast away my confidence because God is telling me to do this and he took Isaac to the mountain and told the young guy, young boy that was with him, stay down at the bottom of the mountain. My son and I, we're going up to, up to the worship God, and we are going to come back down again. <laughs> Y'all catch that? We're going up, but we are going to come back down again. 
He knew he was, and Isaac went with him, and he blindfolded Isaac. And when he blindfolded him, Isaac said, I see the, before he blindfolded him, Isaac said, I see the fire, and I see everything ready, but where's the lamb? <laughs> he started getting suspicious. Where the lamb at? Hey, Abraham said, don't worry, my son. The Lord will provide himself a lamb. Hallelujah. We walk not by sight, but by faith. Come on here, son. Isaac, walk with me by faith. Put them hands out. Let me tie, let me tie them up. Let me blindfold you. <laughs> Isaac by then knew he was the sacrifice. And he knew that Abraham told him to put his head on that rock. And he knew Abraham was fixing to, to cut his head off, uh, uh, slice his throat, and offer him as a burnt sacrifice. Abraham believing that God, he didn't know God was going to stop him. He believed that God was going to allow him to go through that. And then after he was burned up, that God was going to go into the ashes and resurrect him out of the ashes. Read it. He believed even God. He believed even God. Who quickeneth the dead. Who quickeneth the dead. And calleth those things. Who quickeneth the dead. Yeah. Who give life to the dead. And causeth those things. That be not. That be not. As though they were. Ain't that something? The things that's impossible with man. Is possible with God. With God nothing is impossible. Huh? You have got to believe that God can do all things, even beyond what you can comprehend, beyond what your natural mind can see. Abraham didn't know God was going to tell him to stop when he was about to cut his son's head off. He didn't know. But just before that spoke, that sword uh, cut his into his skin, just at the split second, stopped it. Now I know that you believe. Hallelujah. That's the kind of faith Abraham had. We are to have that kind of faith that God tests us. Don't he slay us as Job said. Job said, though he slay me, I will trust him. Okay, finish reading that. Romans 4. Yes, sir. Finish reading that. As it is written, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. I made you a father of many nations. Before him, before him, whom he believed, whom he believed, even God, even God, who quickened the dead, who gives life to the dead, and calleth those things which be not, and brings to pass those things that don't exist. He brings them into existence. Uh huh. As though they were. As though they were. Who against hope. Who against hope. Believed in hope. Believed in hope. That he might become the father of many nations. That he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken. According to what was spoken. So shall thy seed be. So shall thy seed. He believed the word. He kept his eyes. Abraham waxed strong in faith by keeping his eyes on what God said. He waxed strong in faith because he wasn't looking like Peter did. He wasn't looking at the winds. He wasn't looking at the waves. He wasn't looking at the circumstances. He kept his eyes on the word. He kept his eyes. If Peter had kept his eyes on the Jesus, he never would have sunk. If we keep our eyes on Jesus, the devil can't sink us with fear and intimidate us and put fear inside of us. Can he? He waxed, read that part where it said he waxed strong in faith. Is that, has you got to that yet? Finish reading before you stopped off. And being not weak in faith. And being not weak in faith. He considered not his own body. He didn't look at his own body. Didn't look at the situation. Didn't look at, let every man be a liar, but let God's word be true. He didn't look at the natural. His faith wasn't built on what he was seeing. Isaac was there physically where he could see him. And when God said, burn him up, he didn't, he didn't lose his confidence. He didn't cast away his confidence. 
Faith wasn't based on what he could see. Faith wasn't based on the physical, but upon what God said. What God said. What God said. Go ahead and finish. And being not weak in faith. Not weak in faith. He considered not his own body. Considered not his own body. Now dead. Now dead. When he was about a hundred years old. Oh, yes. Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Uh-huh. He staggered not. Staggered not. At the promise of God. At the promise of God. Through unbelief. Through unbelief. But was strong in faith. But was strong in faith. Giving glory to God. Giving glory to God. What made him strong in faith? Looking unto what God said. Kept his eyes on the promise. What made him strong in faith? What is it? You know, God told Joshua, Joshua, I want you to, to march around Jericho. And I'm going to bring down that wall. They marched around Jericho. And, and as they marched around it one day, nothing happened. They marched around it the second day, the third day, the fourth day, the fifth day, the sixth day, the seventh day. Nothing happened. But on the seventh day, they marched around it not one time, not two times, but they marched around it seven times. You know, Joshua wasn't, wasn't looking at nothing but what God said. The world is coming down. We're going to march. We're going to do just like God said. We're not walking by sight. But by what God said, God said, I'm going to bring the wall down, not in, a, not in a bunch of rubbish where you have to walk over them, but flat. The walls is coming down flat where you're going to walk. My God, the devil walls is coming down flat, not where you can just walk over a bunch of, a bunch of rocks and a bunch of other things. You're going to walk flat. It's coming down flat. Satan, your kingdom's coming down flat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Is that all of that? And being fully persuaded. Being fully persuaded. That what he had promised. What he promised. He was able also to perform. Not only. Not only Joshua. But I tell you. Noah. God said Noah. I want you. There's a flood coming. The there's judgment coming upon the world. Noah said it can't be. All this building, all this buying, all this planning. God said, you do what I tell you to do. Noah went out there on dry ground, way up on the mountain, and built a ship. Now that's stupid, ain't it? <laughs> built a ship way up there on a high terrain. And God told him to pitch it, you know, with, with, so that it won't leak. What? So that it won't leak way up on this night. Everybody looking at Abraham crazy. I mean, looking at Noah crazy. But Noah was doing what God said by faith. He pitched it by faith. If God tell you to pray, then pray. If God tell you there's a storm coming, there's a storm coming. If God tell you to get some extra oil in your vessels, get some extra oil in your vessel. If God tell you to get close to him, to lay aside these weights, lay them aside. That's because he see something coming and he want us to be ready. He want us to be prepared for what's coming. So by faith, Abraham built, I mean, Noah built that art. We walk not by sight, huh? But what? By what? Thank you, Jesus. By faith. Look at here, Jonah in that ship running from God. You know, God tell you to do something. You need to do it all your heart. Because if you do it in your heart and in it, you're going to get blessed for it. Even though you done done it. But if you do it with your heart in it. That's why he said. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. And that's why he told us. That forgive. When you forgive. Forgive from the heart. Didn't he? See. 
God blesses you when you do things. Y'all ain't receiving what I'm saying. But he said, God bless you when you do things from the heart. Man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. God blesses when people obey him from their heart. Not just doing it. Paul said, if I do this thing grudgingly, he said, I ain't going to get much for it. But if I do it willingly, then God will bless you. You have got to live for God from your heart. You've got to give from your heart. You've got to pray from your heart. You've got to forgive from your heart. What you do, it's got to be from the heart. A lot of people have lost their reward because they've done it just out of, man, I do it just because the Bible said. One man, one preacher was mad at me. He said, I got to forgive you because the Bible said forgive you. I'm up in the, it didn't count because he didn't do it from the heart. See, this salvation has got to be from the heart. What we do for God, what we receive, everything has got to come from the heart. Out of the heart issues life. Well, I, got to, I believe I'm waiting to say this. For weekend. <laughs> a lot of, I don't want my living to be in vain. Is my praying in vain? Is my giving in vain? No, of course not. <laughs> yes, it is, if it ain't from the heart. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't care what you're doing. If it ain't coming from the heart, it, it don't count. Well, let's finish reading this. Fin did you finish? But I was talking about Joshua. I'm not Jonah. Jonah running. But you know, somewhere Jonah, he got that ground broken up. And from the heart, evidently, must have got that thing right. Because Jonah was taken and he was swallowed. Wasn't he? That fish had him a good meal and burst. <laughs> and inside of that fish was Jonah struggling. And those Jonah held on to them intestines and he said, uh-uh. You know what he said? He said, I'm going to, I'm going to obey God. I've, I've been wrong. I've done wrong, but I'm fixing to obey. I'm going to get this thing right. While he was inside of a fish and the fish had took him in the bottom, in the bottom of the ocean. Ain't no way you're going to get out of something like that that's been swallowed up and the fish is digest, trying to digest you with those uh, gastric uh, juices and using his, uh, using his uh, guts to try to break you down and, and, and cut you totally, just break you. He felt something inside of him, didn't want to digest. That fish felt something inside of him, didn't want to break down. That was nothing but Jonah holding on to them fish's intestines saying, forgive me. I was wrong. I, I, I will obey you. Just give me one more chance. He holding on to them guts saying, Lord, he said, I can't. I, you said, if, if trouble come, if we look toward the holy place of Solomon Bill, that you would hear our prayer. I don't know which the right direction but by faith I'm going to look this direction while I'm holding on to these guts and while these acids is trying to melt me down trying to digest me it ain't going to happen <laughs> it ain't going to happen you never read that? huh? Well, Jonah read a little bit of it I'll let you go here in a minute Jonah chapter 2 read a little bit of it start at verse 1 Read a little bit of it and start at verse 1. Hallelujah. Got it? Read it. Yes. 
Then Jonah prayed uh -huh. unto the Lord his God. Jonah prayed to the Lord his God. Out of the fish's belly. And said, I cried by reason of my affliction. It's too late now, Jonah. You didn't got into the fish's belly. Jonah didn't think it was too late. And got in the fish's belly in the bottom of the ocean. Man, I'm telling you what God got to put folks through to get them to pray. Go ahead. And said, I cried by reason of my affliction. I cried by reason of my affliction. Unto the Lord. Unto the Lord. And he heard me. And he heard me. Out of the belly of hell. Out of the belly of hell. What's the name of this message? Don't throw in the towel. That's the name of, of this message. Don't throw in the towel. Go ahead. And he heard me. Heard me. Out of the belly of hell. Out of the belly of hell. Cried out. Cried out. And thou heardest my voice. And thou heard my voice. For thou hadst cast me into the deep. You cast me into the deep. In the midst of the seas. In the midst of the seas. And the floods come past me about. And the floods come past me about. All thy billows. All thy billows. And thy waves. Uh-huh. Pass me over me. Yes. Then I said. Then I said. I am cast out of thy sight. I'm cast out of your sight. Yet I will look again. Yet I'm going to look again. Toward thy holy temple. Toward thy hope against hope. I'm gonna, in the belly of a fish in the bottom of the ocean. I ain't hope. I'm going to have hope against what I see. Go ahead. The waters can pass me about. Waters surrounding me can pass me about. Even to the soul. Even to the soul. The depth Closed me round about. The death closed me round about. The weeds were wrapped about my head. The devil, this, this, this fish trying to digest me and got these weeds wrapped around my head. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. I went down to the bottom of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me. Yes. Forever. Uh huh. Yet hast thou brought up my life. Yet you brought up my life. From corruption. From corruption. Praying by faith now. Still down there. Praying by faith. Yet you brought up my life from corruption. Oh Lord my God. Oh Lord my God. With my soul fainting within me. With my soul fainting within me. I remembered the Lord. I remembered God. And my prayer came in unto thee. My prayer came unto him. Into thine holy temple. Into your holy temple. Uh -huh. They that observe lying vanity. They that I'm not going to observe be lying down. Devil, you lying telling me just because I'm in the bottom of the ocean and been digested by this fish and because he got his guts wrapped around me trying to digest me. You lying. This ain't nothing but a lie. I'm not accepting this. I'm not accepting what I'm seeing. I'm not accepting what I'm feeling. I'm not accepting what you're trying to bring upon me. I'm not going to throw in the towel yet. Hallelujah. Come on. They that observe lying vanity. They that observe lying vanity. Forsake their own mercy. Forsake your own mercy. But I will sacrifice unto thee. I will sacrifice unto thee. With the voice of thanksgiving. With the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. I'll pay that that I vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. Salvation is of the Lord. And the Lord spake unto the fish. The Lord spake to that devil. The Lord spoke to that fish. Come on. And it vomited out Jonah. And it vomited Jonah out. Upon the dry land. On what? On dry land. Look at God. With God all things are possible. It was impossible for Jonah to deliver himself. But not with God. Can I have about five more minutes? Let's go to John chapter 11. Verse 20, verse 41 through 46. John 11, 41 through 46. And then they took away the stone. Then they took away the stone. From the place where the dead was laid. From the place what, the, what Jesus was in the tomb had died, had been put to death three days prior. And he was in there dead. At least they thought he was. Go ahead. And Jesus lifted up his eyes. Jesus lifted up his eyes. And said. I mean this, uh, this is, was when Lazarus was being raised. This was four days later. They come and told Jesus four days ahead. So he could try to help him get. But Jesus took his time. Because he wanted them to see the glory of God. Go ahead. 
Father. Father, I thank thee. I thank you. That thou hast heard. Listen, this is the proud faith. You want to know what the proud faith is? This is the proud faith. The proud faith is when Jonah was in that vision valley. The proud faith is right here, right now, before he could see any resurrection, before he could see any results. He said, Father, I thank you. Here Jonah still dead, but Father, I thank you. Here Jonah still wrapped up in a mummy's body, but, but Jesus said, Father, I thank you. And I know. He that come to God must believe that he what? That he is. And that he's rewarded to them that diligently seek him. Wrapped up in a body, dead. And Jesus says, Father, I thank you. Same thing Jonah did when he was in that belly. He, uh, that fish belly. He said, I give sacrifice of praise. I, I, I can't get in my pocket and get no money. I can't give no sacrifice no other kind of way because I'm wrapped up in these seaweeds. But I can't open up my mouth and give you sacrifice of praise because I know that down here in this fish belly, in the bottom of, of the well, in the bottom of the, down here, I know you're still here. There ain't no place where God can't hear you. There ain't no situation where God can't deliver you from. There ain't nothing you're going through that God can't pull you out of. Finish that. Father, I thank thee. Father, I thank you. That thou hast heard me. You've heard me. I'm not throwing in the towel. And I knew that thou hearest me always. And I know you hear me always. But because of the people. But because of the people. Which stand by, I said it. Which stand by, I'm saying it. That they may believe that, that thou hast sent me. They may believe that you sent me. Uh-huh. And when he had thus had spoken. When he had thus spoken. Father, I thank you already. He cried. Even though he's in that mummy wrapped up. Father, I thank you. You have already heard me. Hallelujah. See, that's the prayer of faith. When you can't see the results. When you can't see no evidence of nothing. Then you say, Father, I thank you. Glory. Hallelujah. That lets you know your faith ain't based on what you see and what you feel and what man says. But your faith is based in the word. Go ahead. And when he had spoken he cried when he spoke and he cried with a loud voice with a loud voice Lazarus Lazarus come forth come forth and he that was dead all right came forth came forth bound hand and foot bound hand and foot with great clothes great clothes and his face and his face was bound about with a napkin uh-huh and Jesus said unto them Jesus said unto them loose him loose him and let him go loose him Loose him, you devil. Loose, you spirit of infirmity. Loose, you spirit of disease. Loose, you demon. In the name of Jesus, command you to loose. He sent his word. Psalm 107 and 20 said he sent his word to loose them, them, to heal them, to deliver them, to draw the devil back, to make the, make the, the dead give up, make the well, open his mouth up down in the bottom of that ocean, trying to digest Jonah. He had to loosen on dry land. Hallelujah. I thank you that you heard me. Everybody looking around and said, Ain't nothing to happen. Same thing Jesus said when he cursed that fig tree, and it looked like everything. Look like he missed it, Peter. Well, he missed this one. That thing is still green. But Peter didn't know that word had went to the root of that fig tree. And the next day, Peter looked and saw that thing had withered. Why? Because his word is spirit. His word is life. God is not a man that he should lie. Had he said, should it not do it, do it. Had he spoken, shall he not make it good? Don't throw in the, don't throw in the towel. Hallelujah. You that are going through things in your home with your children, going through things in your finances, going through things on your job, 
Don't you throw in the towel. You're not walking by sight. You're not, let every man be a lie, but let God's word be true. Don't you throw in the towel just because it looks dark. Don't you throw in the towel because it's not going the way you think it should be going. Don't you throw in the towel. When you pray, what? Believe that you shall receive and you shall have. People want to receive before they, 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 they want to they wanna see something before they pray. He but you pray first. David said, if I had not believed, I would have fainted. But I believed before I saw something. You got to believe by faith. You got to believe what the word says like Jesus did. Like, like Jonah did. Like Noah did. Like Abraham did. They didn't cast away their confidence. Well, I'll stop. My brother, what's the matter with you? You act like this is a Saturday night. He said his word, didn't he? Look at somebody and tell them, we're not walking by sight. We're walking by faith. Don't let the devil cause you to look at the clouds or look at the winds or look at the situation or circumstances. Your faith is based upon the word. Based upon the word. Based upon the word. Father, we thank you. Help us. Help us to take your word today. Lord, you spoke to me at 4 o'clock this morning to talk on this, to encourage the people's faith, to cause them not to throw in the towel because of what's going on in their homes, in their bodies, in their lives, on their jobs, whatever their situation is. God, don't let your people throw in the towel. Don't let your people quit. You said a righteous man will fall seven times, but he'll get back up again. Help us to get back up again. Help our faith to get back up again. Help our health to get back up again. Help our spirit to get back up again. In every way, Lord, we receive your word. Your word is spirit. Your word is life. We send your word. We send your deliverance. We send this word. Confirm it to those that need help today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for it. Amen, church. Amen, church. Tell him, Lord, I received this. Amen. Some of y'all looking at me like you're looking at, a, looking at a theater. I can't get no response out of you, no witness out of you. Just looking at me. Man, I tell you, this word put a, it becomes something about witness in me. He confirms his word. But he can't confirm it to people that are dead, that can't receive, that can't open up. He confirmed it. He quickened it. That which is dead. But some people have gone beyond death. Thank you for it, Father. Thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm glad I come tonight. Look at somebody and tell them, don't you throw in the towel. Don't throw in the towel. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Just stand on your feet. Maybe somebody want to bring something up here. Bring an uh, offering. I, I, I am just grateful for this. Some of you that's listening online, maybe you want to Send something by, uh, what you call it? Cash out. Huh? But James is doing it right now. Sending something by cash out. <laughs> Freely give. Thank you. Bless you. God bless you. Sister Francis, bless you and your daughter and your son too. Bless you, young man. Amen. Anyone else?